welcome back to the shop everybody. Today I'm going to start turning this collection of parts and metal blanks into a diamond dresser for the bench grinder. And it's probably kind of hard to see what that looks like, so since Mother Nature has been keeping me out of the shop for quite a while now, I've gone ahead and thrown together a small animation that'll show you what it looks like when it's finished. The heart of the dresser is of course the diamond. Loctited to the back of the diamond is a collar that a spring bears against. A threaded plug blocks off the back of the body, and two thumb screws are used to adjust the diamond's projection from the body, as well as secure it in place. A guide is used to align the body to the periphery of the grinding wheel, and is held in place with two flathead cap screws. So the first step here is going to be to go ahead and bring the actual diamond down to length. It's three inches long as I got it, and I need to bring it down to two and five eighths. Okay, that should be down close. That should be down within about 25 thousandths. We'll take it out, measure it real quick, see how much more needs to come off. With the diamond down the size, now I can work on the bushing that will be Loctited to the back of it. This is just some scrap 4140 that I have left over from a previous project. Mm, no. What I think I'm going to do is turn the outside down the diameter first, then drill, bore, and ream the inside. Now that I've taken a bunch of material off, I'll take a measurement and see how much more I need to remove. 88 thousandths yet to come off the diameter. Okay, that was the last pass. Let's take a measurement and see where I'm at. Okay, I am just under the middle of my tolerance range. 
I was plus zero or minus five, and I'm at minus about two and three quarters. Next step is to drill it, and I'm gonna to have to slow the lathe way down for that. This is a little micro 100 boring bar. It's small enough that I can get in and bore this hole out and I can pretty much guarantee that the ID will be um, perfectly true to the OD. Once I get it true, then I can go back and ream it. That should be it for the boring bar. Now we can move on to the reamer. Drop this way down to a really low speed. Get lots of oil in here. Rather have too much than not enough. If I board the hole properly, there's only about ten thousandths of an inch to come off. Looks decent in the hole. Let's back it off and give it a try. And that's what I want to see. There's maybe this is actually, the diamond itself is a thousandths under. So there's probably about a thousandths clearance, but as you can see with the oil, there's kind of a little piston fit there for right now. So what I need to do is come back and part this off so it's a quarter of an inch wide. So I've got my parting tool set up here, and what I'm gonna do is take a facing cut, then move over, the width of the parting tool and the width of the finished part. And that should give me a part that's within my tolerance. With 
the diamond and the diamond collar done, the next thing on the docket is the plug for the back of the body. So this is just a little tap magic. It's gonna inject back into the hole. You probably see it, it's starting to separate even, which I didn't even know was possible. That should be far enough. Okay, let's see if the thumb screw that's designed for the hole is actually gonna go in. It does. Okay, the next step is to bring it down to the major diameter for the 5 8 18 thread.
Okay, it's time to measure this. This is going to go in a 5C collet over at the mill and will be used to hold it while I'm milling the hex on this end. And that's right on target. And if I did this properly, this should be three quarters of an inch. I'm over by three thousandths. It's 0.753, but I was, the tolerance is plus or minus five thousandths. So that's intolerance. So the next step is to redo the change gears, and then I'm going to thread this section. So everything's ready. I got my thread gauge. I've even got some threading wires, which is a new tool for me I've never used. So we'll see how that goes. But if not, I do have a follow back, a fallback um, 5 8 18 fine nut I can test with. But I'd like to try and get better at this, so I'm going to try and use the threading gauge. So let's go ahead and make a scratch pass. That is definitely 18 pitch. I now understand why so many people don't like threading wires. That was incredibly tedious to do. I kind of cheated. I went and found a piece of pack, well, I went and found a packing nut. I have a couple of them over at the bench. And that's what I was using to hold the wires at least close. And if I calculated this right, I still have to go in 10 thousandths of an inch. So I've done the math, and I am technically just under two thousandths, one point nine thousandths above the maximum allowed pitch diameter for a five eighths eighteen two a thread. So I'm going to go back and take another pass or two and see if I can't get this to be perfect, just because I want to. So I've done the math again, and I'm on the low side, but I'm still within tolerance. And now I definitely understand why a lot of people don't like threading wires. So this is done here to lathe. I'm going to go over to the bandsaw and part this off. Not part it off, cut it off. And then I can go over to the uh, mill and put the hex in the hex in this end. I've got everything set up and now it's time to mill the hex.
And that's it for making the hex. Gone ahead and mounted up the 5C chuck to finish off a couple parts. First one being the plug that's almost done. First step is going to be to chamfer the edge of the hex and then chamfer the leading edge here of the threaded section just so it's not so sharp. Nice and secure. What do I have this set to? That's way too fast. That's 2000 RPMs. Let's drop that down to like six something. Almost. There we go. Nice chamfer on the edge there. I'm going to come back now and get, try and get just close enough to I start nicking the corners so they're not sharp. So it took a couple of tries to get it down to where I wanted it, but I'm just now starting to chamfer this edge. So I'll run this all the way across until I catch the edge of the threads. So before I can bring this down to length, I need to give this a nice clean face so that I can actually take measurements on it because it's just rough sawn. I cut off all the excess with the bandsaw. That's a nice clean face. Now I can take a measurement and see how much I have to take off. Everything's lined up, and I have to take 76 thousandths off. see here. Now that it's face to length, I need to see if I can chamfer it. And I want to do it with this 45 degree tool if, if possible. Yeah, that'll work. I got clearance. And that turned out well. Okay. I've gone ahead and chucked up the smaller of the two thumb screws. This one I can just put right in a collet because it's long enough, the projection of the actual threaded part is long enough that the head will actually fit back down into the body of the collet. So all I need to do now is trim it to length because I've already touched it off. And 
And that's it for that one. So believe it or not, it's been about two hours since I finished the last thumb screw. And that's because apparently these Tico quarter 20 ones are pretty hard. I had originally just chucked up the a previous one because I have a couple of these in here in the, the spindle and want to, want to part off the excess and it broke the insert right away. Which didn't seem quite right because I've never had a problem before. So I took this over to the grinder. Well, actually not, not this one particularly, but the first one because I'd already messed the threads and everything up on it. And it is indeed hard. So for this one, what I ended up doing was grinding off the, the majority of the, the threaded part that I don't need. So now I can turn this over here. So let me show you how to do that. So this is just a bushing. It's got a counter bore in it. And what this lets me do is thread the thumb screw in like this and it'll bottom out. The counter bore allows it. I've checked it. Then I can put it in, well actually I should probably put the, just a little quarter 20 bolt, nothing special. And now I can put it here in the collet. Like so. And then I can take a wrench. and lock it down. So now I can turn it. So beyond turning this down to the to the actual appropriate length, I also have to drill it, which will be interesting because I haven't done that yet. Hopefully I can drill it. We'll find out. But how I'm going to turn this is, the bushing is a given thickness that I know. So all I have to do is touch off here from the front of the bushing and then take some measurements with the dial indicator here. And then I come back and I know exactly how long it'll be. So let me go ahead and do that. And I know I have to come off of it. What was the measurement here? 231 thousandths. So, one, two, thirty, one. So now I can go ahead and readjust the dial indicator and set a, z a true zero here. I now know that when I get to the zero mark, I will have the thumb screw down to the appropriate length so we can get started now. So now, so now it's the right, right length, length. I can go, I can ahead, go ahead and try, try and, and drill, drill this. this. We'll see, we'll how, see that how that goes. goes.
There's the pilot hole to depth, and I didn't break a drill bit. Now let's see if we can do the final one. Okay, and that's the clearance hole for the cup, um, clearance hole for the bronze insert. That's what I meant to say. For some reason I keep thinking I'm making a copper one, but I'm not. So after yet more messing with this, I do have some Loctite in the hole. Now I'm going to see if I can press this in. There we go. That's enough right there. Now I just need to let the Loctite dry. And there, there we, we go. go. That's, That's done. done. It's definitely been a frustrating night because I almost forgot to chamfer the edges of the collar on the diamond and I would have been really annoyed if I had unmounted the 5C chuck. That's all it took a little bit with the file. Okay, now I'm truly done for the evening.